Hi guys, Styler here. In this video, we are going to have a look at the SmartQ P1 mini projector from Doogie. So before I start this video, I'm this time going to recommend some other cool YouTubers on the net. Just in case that you don't know them yet, go check them out. I gladly also give smaller YouTubers the chance to grow bigger. We don't really compete, but support each other. As we all just have one goal, to show you out there some nice gadgets, smartphones and tech stuff from Asia. So without further ado, let's start. So it comes in a colorful box like this, saying DLP Texas Instruments in the corner. Life starts from Smart Cube and the Doogie logo and name below. On the sides we have nothing special. Let's see on the back. We find the Doogie website, CE and FTC logos and that it is made in China and designed by Doogie. And now to the content. Inside we first see the cube in the same style as the packaging. We have the wall charger. The wall charger is rather big and that's not a type that I have seen before. In the bottom we see some specifications saying 5 volt 2.0 amp and a CE logo. So I guess this will help to charge the smart cube pretty quick. Let's put it aside and then we also find a standard flat micro USB cable. And last the Smart Cube P1 projector. Let me just turn it around so you can see it from different angles. And that's it. On the front we see the lens, Doogie logo and Smart Cube P1 name. On the right side we find a flap and behind that a small reset hole and a normal size USB port where you can insert a USB stick and you can even also use a USB hub. Below that there is also a built-in loudspeaker so it can play music directly out of the cube. So on the left side you can adjust the lens for the picture sharpness. There's another flap covering the micro USB port and beside that to the left a small LED indicator and to the right the power button. In the top there will be a small fan that will blow the hot air out of the cube. And that's it for the design. Let me do a 360 degree turn and as you can see it isn't that big in the hand. Next let me show you the weight and size of the cube. And here just for fun, compared with a glass cube that I have in almost the same size. So let's turn on the cube. And the first thing I notice is the noise from the small fan. It's pretty evident, but for me it is still in an acceptable level. But some users could be annoyed by this. So here we see the desktop. It comes with built-in Android 4.4.2 OS and you will need to connect a smartphone to take control. I'm now going to show you how to connect a phone to the cube. First you have to press quick two times on the power button. Then you will get a QR code that you will need to scan with a QR scanner app. You can find a lot of these in the Play Store. After the QR code is scanned, it will download an app APK on the phone and will need to install that one. Then you open the app, just install and hit the scanner icon. Then again you scan the QR code and the smartphone will connect to the cube. If that for some reason shouldn't work, you can also just scan for Wi-Fi on the smartphone and then there choose the hotspot called Doogie. Then it will connect. 
after it is connected successfully it should exit the page and you should now see the desktop again. Now inside the remote control app on the phone you can control the cube. So it comes with some few stock apps. Let's have a look inside the settings. And let me pair with my MX Master mouse via Bluetooth. If you want to insert a text string, you can type it in the app in the field saying English only and then press the send button. Let's have a look inside some of the settings here for the sound. Let's try out the built-in speaker in the cube. Then there's display settings and wallpapers. Here info about the storage and also the battery and the apps. It is also multi-language and in about we see it's Android 4.4.2 KitKat. The Chrome browser is pre-installed and the internet is working. Here the gallery and some sample pictures. I want these off a USB stick. And now let's also try to play a short MPEG-4 movie clip. The built-in movie player offers various settings and possibilities. Let me just show these here. And last, let me try a mp3 song, again using the built-in loudspeaker. It came with the Play Store pre-installed, but for some reason I was not able to download or install apps. I'm not sure why. Probably something that are going to be fixed in a future update. YouTube can be played fine in the browser. Let's try to start up Miracast. It lets you show your smartphone display one to one. And here with the YouTube app on my phone, there will be a little delay, but it's okay. If you press the DLNA button, it will start up an app called Sharing Happiness. Basically, it is also just Wi-Fi Direct and the same as Miracast, just with another app and interface and you will need to download and install an app again on the phone.
So during the test I have used a USB hub like this. If you shake or move the cube while it is on, you will be able to hear the fan change speed a little bit. Uh, I guess it's best not to move it too much when it's on. And let me also show you that it can be used as a power bank for a smartphone. So that's also very convenient. Last, let me try to show you the picture quality and size. If I change the distance to the wall, it will of course lose some brightness when you get more far away. And uh, you will also need to adjust the sharpness on the side of the cube again. Within one meter, the picture is best, I would say. When you get like two meters or more away, it clearly begins to lose some contrast and brightness. But that's also what you could expect from a small projector like this one. Overall, I still think it does the job okay. So guys, that's it for the review. Remember also to check out my blog. You'll find the link in the video description. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.